This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. G'day, everybody. Thanks very much for joining me. In this chat, I have the pleasure of talking to Martin Larson, who is the very gifted guitarist at the center of At The Gates. Now, the catalyst for our chat is the release of the 2018 album To Drink From The Night Itself. Throughout this chat, we delve into the intricacies of the new album, the then new album, explore the enduring influence and impact of Martin's remarkable guitar playing and reflect on the magnum opus, the big one, Slaughter of the Soul. So here he is, Martin Larson. This must be the elusive Mr. Larson. How are you, mate? I'm fine. Uh, (laughs) Thank you. How are you? I'm good, mate. I'm plugging away. I'm sorry. I I, I got the... Uh, I I had a schedule uh, sent yesterday, and then I I got the new one twenty minutes after I was supposed to call you. Oh, is that right? Look, no dramas. I was just uh, fucking with you. It's all good. It's all good. I'm just having fun with you. It's been, oh, a, long, okay. it's been a long day for me, mate. To be honest with you, so my voice is a bit. Oh, oh okay, okay. I've been oh, I've been on the radio uh, and doing all sorts of things, so my voice is a bit um, sen- not sensitive. Oh, you know when right. you got a sore throat. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, okay. I'm stressed and confused on my end, so oh, we'll, yeah. we'll try and make it work. Oh, don't worry about that. Uh, that no, happens. just because uh, a lot of technical. Oh, I'm not, you know, I'm analog. I'm, I'm not used to this. Okay. It's all right. I'll, I'll be fine. Okay. All right. Well, look, how much time have we got, actually? I'd better ask you that before we kick things off. Uh, this is the last one. So uh, in, I need to do... Uh, well, you, you have about a half an hour at least. Okay, sweet. All right. Well, um, how's things been going with the Australian media? Have you had a lot to do with us over the years, and are we any different to the rest of the world? Um, n- not really in a difference. I've, it, it's mostly Thomas uh, who who does the interviews, so I haven't yeah. done too many. Um, but I, I've, I've done a few uh, foreigners with Australia, uh, but. Uh, I can't really say if they're any different than we're all people, you know. Yeah, I hear, I hear. I've done hundreds of interviews in my time now, and I've done more interviews with people from two parts of the world, Perth and Western Australia, so, of course, here on the continent I'm on, and Sweden. No idea how that's turned out, but I've I've spoken to so many bands from Sweden, all wonderful artists, you know, Marcus Jadell from Avatarium, Lee Fedling from Candlemass, and everybody's fantastic from Sweden. I'm convinced you're the nicest people on the planet. Oh, well, thank you. (laughs) All right, so, mate, the new album. Now, look, I haven't had a chance to sample it, which is unfortunate because I'm sure it's an absolute cracker as everything that you've ever put your guitar tracks to under the very hallowed at the gates moniker always is but what have you got to say or share about the album to drink from the night itself um well um it's we're trying to you know uh honor our past and and uh, at the same time look forward and try new things and uh, it feels like we've managed to to uh, come up with a good mixture of, of uh, old and new stuff on this one, mm-hmm. and uh, hopefully we're going to keep on going in this direction. There, there are a few hints on the on the last album uh, of the direction that we're going further in now. Um, you know, the, the the stuff that's different on the last one, a uh, little more, a little bit more um, dramatic and, mm-hmm. and cinematic, or what you will, songs like Order from Chaos and Night's Eternal. Uh, there's a bit more of this, of, of that on, on this new album. And uh, also it's a little bit more death metal um, yeah. our, our roots. Um, okay. Uh, yep. I think we felt that, uh, I think we felt that the last album satisfied as we are still are we're re- really proud and, and, and happy with it still but it's a little clean you know it's a little um, tidy in a way yes yeah, so I know so what you're this one's yeah. dar- darker and more more harsh I suppose this new one I think that'll be music to fans ears that one right there I'm 40 years of age so I remember 
I don't so much remember when Slaughter of the Soul came out, but I certainly remember things changing a lot after it came out. So beforehand, you had excellent outfits like um, Bolt Thrower, the Kyle Willett's fronted Bolt Thrower, but then you guys came out and everything changed, it's fair to say, and you had a big say in that because obviously you were the guitarist on the album. So are you aware of how much you've influenced modern heavy metal and Really, I mean, bands are still uh, ripping off Slaughter of the Soul. It's probably the most copied album outside of the self-titled Rage Against the Machine album. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, people say that off and on, but it's, you know, I think it's health, healthy to, to uh, try and keep a, a bit of a distance to, to all that. Hmm. Uh, and also, for me personally, uh, from... From mid '90s onward, uh, to me, the metal scene became so boring. So it was so clinical and produced and, and all that. And I, I missed my underground feel of of death metal. Uh, so I started drifting more to hardcore punk and, and stuff like that. That felt more genuine. Okay. Uh, and then now now it's healthier than, healthier than ever, the, the metal scene. And it bounced back within just a few years, I, I, I suppose, around the millennium. But uh, I wasn't aware of it at the time. So I'm constantly backtracking and finding bands from 10 years ago who are brilliant now. Hmm. Um, so what I'm trying to say with many words is, is uh, I wasn't really aware of our impact on, uh, on the scene because I, I wasn't really paying attention around, you know, yeah, sure. late 90s and yeah. early, early noughts, noughties. Yeah, oh, look, Dark Rain, Tranquility, um, In Flames. I know In Flames have changed a lot since they were really, I'm not going to say they were copying you guys, but, but you know, they really came out and got your template and brought it to the masses, so to speak, after you guys broke up, mm. and they really became big in, in your absence. So it was really interesting to see just to support my comments about the influence of Slaughter of the Soul that Metal Injection Webzine has ranked Slaughter of the Soul number eight in their list of top ten influential heavy metal albums, and I'm pretty sure that's an all-time list. So it's not just me. It's oh. a pretty much, a, pretty much a, a universally held view that without Slaughter of the Soul, uh, a certain sound which has now come through in, in so much of heavy metal. And another point that I'll make is even, I think... I don't know whether he did this intently or on purpose or he'd listened to Slaughter of the Soul or any one of your earlier albums, but Rob Flynn and Machine Head through the 2000s adopted a lot of that, you know, that twin lead guitar Iron Maiden style approach that, that you incorporated into death metal very early on. Even bands like that were starting to do it. And I remember comments that Rob and his then guitarist Logan Madder made in the mid to late 90s where they were talking about that they were nothing like uh, Rob Halford and Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and the like and not 10 years later they were sounding very much like them and in my view yeah, yeah. a lot of that comes down to your influence because you guys were the first and you as the guitarist were really the first to sort of join those dots so I mean I'll stop talking about your influence in the sec but I think it's, it's an <laughs> opportunity for me to talk to a bloke who's a real original and who's an excellent guitarist, and to sort of impress upon you that you have made a significant impact on heavy metal. So congratulations for doing that. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, I think um, what happened for us was uh, because the, the the earlier albums are really intricate, and you know, just riffs on riffs on riffs. Hmm. Um, and when we when we made Slaughter of the Soul, we came out of a, a really bad time. I'd, you know, crash tours and and whatever, and it it was uh, it was a little bit of a like a, a make or break hmm. feeling, and we wanted to you know go back to making a, just a classic metal album, but the way at the gates would do it. You know, we grew up with Maiden and, and Priest and all those bands. That hmm. that was our that's our roots, and uh, we wanted to make one of those kinds of albums. But then, also we had all this history that you know we grew up with all the the extreme music as well. Uh, well, I suppose Slayer most of all. Yeah. So it came 
you know, it came through that filter also, that, that, that you know, Slayer beat thing. Uh, so it's, you know, in one way, I, I suppose it's like a comfort album for us. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, uh, am I making any sense now? Yeah, no, you're making complete uh, sense. It was, an, it was an album that was a summary of your influences, but you did it your way. You did it your way. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's a it is a uniquely original album because of that. And I could I could tell. I've always been a fan of Maiden. And I could tell where you guys were coming from through that. But with the exception of maybe Carcass, but even they were very different to you guys. Um, I hadn't heard anybody yeah. do that. I think everybody felt the same way, and it really set the tone for metal afterwards. So, yeah, I, I do think yeah, metal in the late nineties uh, for people like you and I, it was a very interesting time. I think. The Stuart Anstice-led Cradle of Filth did some really good things between 1996 and 1998 before, you know, they've only just sort of really started to come back into their own courtesy of their, their new, they've got a new guitarist who's very much of the same mind, I think, as what Stuart Anstice was. Um, so they're putting a lot of that Iron Maiden and uh, bombastic twin lead stuff back into their music. But heavy metal, to me, should be very adventurous. It should be music that is very yeah, challenging yeah. and... It, it's it's meant to be music that's very inspirational, if you like, and as soon as it becomes safe, and I don't know whether that's the point you were making where it all started to sound very sort of samey in the late 90s onwards until there was some resurgence there in the 2000s, but yeah, I agree with you. It was a very hard time for metal in the late 90s. It went underground completely, and unless you were into some brutal death metal outfits that were sort of here today, gone tomorrow, or just released some demos, it was, it was very yeah. hard to walk into a record store like a HMV, were a virgin and find a find a, a metal album. Even even your stuff was a bit scarce to find. You had to go into an independent record store and find it. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, as I said, that, that, those are my kind of dark years as, as for metal. I still listen heavily to all the old stuff, but I, I didn't dig out any new things. Yeah, what did you think of some of the leading lights of that era, like Pantera? Um. I was never heavily into Pantera. I, I, I listened a bit uh, in the early 90s, but um, I have to plead ignorant. Sorry. No, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. And, mate, what did you do between 1996 or, or when the band broke up? And I think it, you, At The Gates reconvened in about 2007, if I'm not mistaken, for some live shows. And you've sort yeah. of been on and yeah, off yeah. again since then. But what, did you just find a day job in between then and have a family or...? Or something else? Kind, kind, no, no family. But um, uh, I was a postman for eight years, and and I I studied a bit, uh, and I kept on playing, but you know, hardly got out of the rehearsal room. I I had a uh, a couple of punk bands. I had a, a prog rock band. You know, um, I try to try different things hmm. when I got the chance, uh, but. Um, I suppose, you know, that long hiatus made me realize what, what I, that this is what I want to do. Yes, okay. It's funny. I was talking to Opu from Amorphous. I don't, but do you know the guys in Amorphous at all? No. Well, I wrote to one of them, you know, like 1990 or something, but... <laughs> that was very, very, very briefly. Yeah. I was, so, no, I, I, I wouldn't say I know them. He, he's he been out of the game for a long time, Opu, their bass player, lovely guy. And um, he it turns out he's got a role in the Finnish parliament, so working for the government, but actually in Parliament House wow. there, whatever the, uh, we call it Parliament House here in Australia, I'm not sure what they call it there in Finland. But he's only just got back into the band after about a 20-year absence. So what you said just a moment ago resonates in that yeah you can't walk away from playing heavy metal or rock and roll can you it's in your blood no matter what you do in between you always eventually come back to it yeah I suppose that's true uh, I can only speak for myself but it's it's definitely true for me yeah it's it's true for a lot of people that I've spoken to actually even if they're just sort of playing in a band Hi. that is around town or what have you and Covers. I mean, I play covers music, so I'm a bass guitarist. So I love playing funk and disco music, yeah. even though I do love listening to heavy metal. But as a bass guitarist, you can probably imagine if you want to do slap and thumb, Larry Graham style bass <laughs> playing, heavy metal really isn't it, um, except for 
the no, no, no. Well, maybe <laughs> if you're a weird Japanese fan, but that, uh, that's probably all the only place where it could work. Are you talking to that fella that dresses up like a woman? Talking about that fella that dresses up like a woman and plays bass guitar like one of the best bass guitarists you've ever seen? Have you seen that guy? Mm, probably not. Okay. Doesn't ring a bell. Well, I can't remember his uh, name, but he, he dresses up in lingerie. <laughs> he dresses up in lingerie oh, yeah? and women's outfits, like very skimpy outfits, and then proceeds to play slap bass like very few people can. And he's from Japan, <laughs> and I'm not sure what his go is. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, when you said Japan, because the singer in my old band was Japanese, and he was always telling me oh, hilarious okay. jokes. They have a, a, a tremendous sense of humor, the Japanese, when you get to know them. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I just heard, uh, I don't even remember the name of the band, but some kind of death metal band with slap bass from Japan the other day. Not sure I like it, but it's it's somehow the Japanese have a way of making things work that shouldn't. Yeah, it's a good uh, way of putting it's probably, it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's probably just down to, um, uh, what's the word? Um I can't find the word, but if you know, you have to believe in it yourself. And yeah, you can make I it think work. you've got to suspend disbelief, haven't you? At times, like you've got to sort of park yeah, yeah. your park your ideas of what reality is and go. I'm just going to go with the flow here because it's not going to work otherwise. That's especially with that bass guitarist that I mentioned a moment ago. I'll try and find his name <laughs> a bit later, but yeah. But uh, hey, what did what did you think of? Thomas's work when he was out of uh, away from at the gates in the haunted was that was that something that you sort of looked at and what could potentially have you have been a part of that and I might have missed something you might have been a part of it but uh, what are your thoughts on the haunted? Um, well, I'm I'm pretty much into all different kinds of um, um, at the gates related bands. Uh, you know, there's a sense of quality to what everyone does. Uh, I, mm. my favorite haunted album, if if that's a topic, is is the Dead Eye, the the the, the very progressive one. Uh, I think to me that was their pinnacle. Um, and uh, Tompa's always been in brilliant bands, This Fear and mm. Great Deceiver and and uh, Skid System. I, I've actually played a skit system in skit system off that. and on for yeah. a few times, yeah. but yeah. not, not along with Tompa. Uh, and um, so, but yeah, uh, you know, if 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 if, uh, if the band consists of people who know what they're doing, hmm. no matter the music, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. I think. Also, too, I think Adrian, I've met Adrian before just at a meet and greet when he was in Cradle of Phil, so, you know, just a shake shake of the hand sort of thing, sign the CD, you uh, walk, yeah. walk away. But um, Adrian's one of the very best extreme metal drummers ever. Um, what's it like playing in a band with him? Because he doesn't seem to put a foot wrong. No, it's, uh, um, it's very rewarding and inspiring. I, I don't know any person who puts more hard work and dedication into what they're doing than Adrian. So uh, to be honest, it's, it's a pri privilege to, to share a stage with that guy. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And have you been to Australia before? Yeah, a couple of times. Uh, two or three times without the gates. Uh, oh, I haven't, right. you know, I'd, li I'd like to go and see things on my own, but there's... You know, there's the matter of time and money, uh, but one day. Hmm. Sorry, what was that? Yeah, one day. I'll, oh, one, I'll day, one day ago. Uh, Sorry, yeah, yeah. No, it's. I just. Yeah. What, what do you? What's your take on the Australian fan? Are we? Uh, I know I've asked about the Australian journalists and the questions we ask, and but uh, are Australian yeah, yeah. are Australian fans any? Or in what way are they different, or are we any different to the rest of the world? In your view? Uh, not that I've thought about but you know different journalist, journalists from different parts of the world um, ask this question uh, off and on you know yeah. and uh, so I've had some time to think about it and I'd say that it's it's it, it's not a matter of 
nationality as much or culture. It's more your subculture, you know. It's because mm-hmm. metalheads seem to be similar all all over the world. Indeed. I think that's it, there. There's more of a difference between a metalhead somewhere and uh, like a uh, whatever you know. Just pick your subculture. Yeah, you're looking to death place. or black metal or what have you, that, or are you that, talking that, about that the goth, or the goth thing, or something? Yeah, yeah, whatever you know. But but uh, so there are more similarities between metalheads in in like Australia and Singapore, or Brazil, or what have you, hmm. than that um, differences, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, you're spot on. But, actually, but then again, I, I only see I only see them in in this controlled environment where I'm doing my thing. So uh, maybe I'm a little bit ignorant too. So I don't know. Oh well, you've, you you toured the world and uh, places um, that, are, that are, if you've played there, let me know. But a place like the Philippines or Indonesia, they'd be rabid for at the gates. I'm a very big believer in the Asian market, and there are so many heavy metal fans in the Asian market. My wife is my wife, her family yeah, is from, yeah. the, from the Philippines, and I know for a fact there are so many oh, metalheads really? over there. Yeah, yeah, um, and oh, if because we were just there. Oh, really? Uh, like two weeks ago. Um, um, Indonesia, I'd love to go, and hopefully in a few years' time we'll, we'll go. But uh, Philippines, we were, we were just there. Um, but we, it was a festival. Uh, so it's hard to, you know, a huge 20,000 people festival. Hmm. Uh, and we played late, and it was blazing heat. So the, the crowd was a little... Uh, it seemed a little tired, but Subdued, I'm sure that yeah. was, uh, you know, I'm happy they were, they still stuck around when we played. We played, I think, uh, we were the the last but one band for the day, and it was blazing heat, and people had been there since noon. Hmm. Uh, so, I, as I said, I, I, I'm happy that just that they were still there when we played. Yeah, I, uh, and it's you know, judging from that experience, I think it's a little unfair. Yeah, I, I, look, I've um, we, we spent a lot of not a lot of time. We spend enough. We yeah, we spend a lot of time over there. It's fair to say, and and we do like it over there. But we travel. We go to the islands. But when I was on the island of Cebu, where my wife's family is from, I'm pretty sure it was Cebu because I've got the local newspaper. And you know, the American death and black metal band called um, Angel Corpse. They came yeah, to yeah. town. And they were playing to a small club in town. And look, I, because I talk to a lot of Australian artists, I've been telling them, look, you guys have got to find a way to get over there because it's an untapped market. I'm, you know, I have to call it what it is. It's an untapped market, and there are fans over there who would love to hear heavy metal live and in the flesh. And if if more yeah. bands, I think, can open more doorways there, then it'll just become a routine thing, and it'll open up. It'll give more bands globally an opportunity to play in two of the world as well, rather than just playing all of the so-called Western nations. Definitely. But I've, I've thought about that too, that there are so many, you know, for us, so many gray areas metal wise hmm. in the, uh, on the world map that should be looked into. And also me, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, not talking about metal at all. I'm, I'm a bit of an explorer myself. I, I I'm curious about the world. I want to see, things so uh whatever gives me a a free opportunity to see the world i'm i'm there okay cool yeah no i'm with you on that one there it's a bit bit hard for me these days with the two kids but we do we do take them with us everywhere but they're like bloody bacteria petri dishes kids they end up getting sick and then you end up getting sick because they get bloody sick oh Um, right yeah yeah yeah, it's tough it's it's you don't realize how good you've got it when you're single or unattached and without kids in terms of the travel um but um yeah look i'm sure when they get a bit older and they won't be bloody touching everything in unusual places and then getting sick within an hour of touching everything <laughs> it'll be a lot more fun yeah, for us. But, uh, hey I'll, yeah. I'll ask you one more question before i let you go mate if that's okay um but you, yeah. you are a, in my view you are a, a revered guitarist so i need to ask you about your gear what what type of guitar are you using and what what's your amp set up and your effects set up look like in 2018 um, well, we just started playing with, um, you know, Ola from Haunted. He's, he's got mm-hmm. his own brand now called Solar. 
Okay. Uh, so I've never been a gearhead myself. Uh, I've always played whatever's put in, into my hands. Uh, but I'm I'm really happy with this um, solar guitar that I have now. Okay. Uh, I played the Ibanez until recently. Yeah. Uh, which is perfect. It's fine. The thin uh, neck, thin neck would work really the, well for you. Yeah. Yeah, but with with the solar, and this is a, a really new thing. It's just since a few months back. Uh, but we have a guy, you know, just a couple of hours away that we can. <laughs> You know, I, I can just go and knock on his door and or do, call him or whatever. You know, uh, it's it seems easier in all kinds of ways. Um, and uh, right now we're playing PV amps. We um, I just got a, a new um, what's up sixty. Oh man, I'm too tired. You know what I mean? The, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I you're upgraded saying. fifty one fifty. Uh, yep. And uh, so, and and uh, but we, we were um, talking about places like Asia uh, that are some places are kind of new to metal, and you're not really you don't always get what you're asking for gear wise, you know, backline wise. So we started using the the pods now. Oh yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So. Oh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should know this. Uh, no, I, it's okay. I don't know the, the, the no. name of what we're using. I'm a right bit now, like that myself. The pod, but, you know, yeah. just just to have just to have your uh, a sound that's the same. Yeah. Or, so using the or, line six uh, well, equipment. You know, depend, yeah. depending on on the cab, mostly yeah. the same uh, wherever you go. Uh, so that's like a, a safe thing, uh, and I'm kind of new to that. Uh, also, right now, so I'm I'm getting more and more comfortable hmm. with. Um, there's you know there's always a slight delay when you're changing sounds, so you have to step on it a little bit ahead of when you want it to change all, all those Indeed. things. Yes. Yep. Yep. No yeah. that no that feeling myself. That's why I stopped using effects as a bass guitarist. Actually, yeah, it was just. I mean, I shouldn't need to use it anymore. I don't need more. But yeah, when I was, I also play guitar, but my stage instrument predominantly is is bass guitar and i just have everything in a rack these days you know yeah. sans amp and my compressor and all the rest of it so i just it's all about right, right. the wrist for me getting it right in the wrist because i'm doing a lot of slap bass and stuff and if i get it right oh, there yeah. i generally get my sound right yeah just i only i mean i have music man basses uh, stingrays and sterlings but um i i've learned you know to to control my tone even i think it's fair to say and by throwing it off my rack by just how heavy i pick the strings some if I pick light yeah yeah. So, yeah because if I rely on too much electronics it's like the goblins get into it and bad things can happen mm -hmm. and I get really frustrated as I'm sure yeah. you can appreciate yeah 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 I know what you're talking about <laughs> uh. alright mate look I'll, I'll let you go thank you so much for the conversation it's a privilege to talk to you finally and I, look I really hope people recognise you for the wonderful contribution that you've made to heavy metal by via your guitar playing because you've had an extraordinary career and I just hope you keep on doing what you're doing and continue to have an excellent career in a band like At The Gates. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. No worries. And thank you for your time and support. No problems. Well, if we ever, if you come down to Australia, I'd love to shake your hand and have a beer with you, mate. So no worries at all. Yeah. You, so you're you're in Perth, are you? Uh, uh, Brisbane. Oh, I'm on the Sunshine Coast. Which no, is a bit, bit right, flat. Brisbane. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you said you were talking to Perth. Uh, sorry, I, I got confused. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, you were talking to Perth a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, we'll definitely come to Brisbane uh, one time. Um, so uh, I don't know what up. the plans are right now, but we'll, I know there are plans for Australia at least, and and uh, usually we we play Brisbane if we come to Australia. So yeah. Cool. All right, well, I'm seeing your uh, compatriots in Europe tomorrow night, actually. Um, I had a chat to Joey oh, a couple of weeks back, so I'm going to be doing a review on his show. I'm sure it'll be a fab show because it's a two-hour show. So that's what I was saying. So many artists All from right. Sweden. Yeah, such a great country for music. So it's, uh, yeah, 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 it's cool. Well, it's, you know, the secret? It's the, the public music schools that we used to have. Um, Is that right? I don't think we do anymore. Yeah, yeah. It was all state financed back in the 70s 80s 
So basically everyone played instruments for a few years in school. Well, that explains it then, doesn't it? Because there are just so many Swedish artists the world over that, you mean, you know, from Ingve, of course, everybody knows Ingve, but um, just in in orchestra pits playing the violin, um, it's just a country that I I don't know why it's not more synonymous for its music. Um, But as far as I'm concerned, it's in terms of the modern era, I don't think any country single handedly, you know, from ABBA through to you guys, through to Ingve, through to. Candlemas, um, I could keep going. You know, Avatarium, there are so many wonderful bands that come out of Sweden. It's a shame that, that, you know, the public funding isn't there for music anymore because everything was such top quality. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Um, um, I think uh, we're, we're getting by, at least. That's that's all, all I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. That's all you can hope for playing rock and roll. I call everything rock and roll these days. I know you guys are playing a, a variation of it, but still, all you can do when yeah, you're playing yeah, rock and roll is just do your thing. That's, that's fine with me. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank, thanks for your time and yeah. support. No problems, mate. All the very best. Um, Good to talk to you. Yeah, likewise. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks, mate. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I enjoyed participating in it. So if you like that one, there are many more just like it over at scarsandguitars.com. And if you like listening, maybe you like reading, because I've written a book about the podcast. Click on the link in the banner on the website. You'll be taken to a marketplace of your choice, and you can download a sample. And if you do complete the purchase, I want to thank you personally. So please do hit me up. I've got some more information to share with you about the book in the moment, but before we get to that, I need to bid you a fond farewell. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith, and I'm the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast series. Until next time, it is a very goodbye for now. This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew Mackay-Smith. I've been the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast since 2017. The first musician I interviewed for the show was David Vincent from Morbid Angel and things have just snowballed from there. In all, I've posted almost 650 podcast episodes featuring conversations with many of the leading lights of rock, heavy metal and beyond. It just got to a point where I thought I need to write a book about all this, so that's exactly what I did. In Scars and Guitars Volume 1, you'll read a heap of deep reveals and commentary, such as Des Fafara talking about Cold Chamber and why the band will never return. You know, if you're a a band just starting out, you need to hear me. Do not start a band with partners. Yeah, wise words there. Sage advice, mate, for anybody. Don't ever, because I, I can't go do Cold Chamber right now unless I get others involved. Phil Anselmo talks about the episode in his career, which gives him the greatest sense of accomplishment. I think the staying power of the, the fans and the staying power of the I, of the songs, you know, whether it's Pantera, Down, or Super Joint, the fans remember the songs. Alex Skolnick from Testament confirms that, yes, playing the guitar in Ozzy's band is anything but an ordinary gig. Will Silent Oz from Demu Borgir write a book? Pa from Sabaton gives advice to people who want to start a band. Look at the team around you, look at the bandmates. If, uh, if the guys want to be on the stage, then it's all cool. If the guys want to be backstage, then it's not going to be cool. Current and former members of Cradle of Filth discuss the band's seminal 90s material. Read about the reaction to George Lynch and Mark from Suicide Silence's comments when they throw shade at then-President Donald Trump. We have this idiotic monster, you know, this egotistical, self-aggrandizing, complete piece of shit in there. I, 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 just, I just can't understand how we've gotten to this place. And yeah, we kicked a hornet's nest with Sepultura. Percussive overlord Gene Hoagland talks about recording with Chuck Schuldiner. Chuck was always, um, you know, he was, he was very, you know, very open-minded, and and he was into having his his musicians that were playing with him just reach out for for the best stuff that they had. Phil Campbell from Motorhead discusses what it takes to get sober. John Five answers his critics who dismiss his tenure with Marilyn Manson. You know, my name is John Five, and Manson gave me that name, and um, I 
I had some of the best years of my life in that band and, and learned a lot. And we get the lowdown on Trey Zagtoth from those who would know, including his mother. All across Scars and Guitars Volume 1, there are moments of tension, relief, tragedy, exhilaration, and throughout it all, you'll obtain insight that I believe no one else has managed to obtain from many of your favourite artists. So treat yourself. Scars and Guitars Volume 1 is currently available as an ebook with a print edition on the horizon. Follow the links attached and download a sample. I'm sure you'll be compelled to read the whole book. <laughs> 